Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a man dead after he was hit and killed by a vehicle overnight. Details on what witnesses told police on the scene. Plus, the number of coronavirus cases continues to ramp up here in Bear County and across the U.S., but another vaccine is bringing more hope to Americans. Dr. Leference with UT Health will be joining us live in our leading essay segment to talk about the vaccine plans in the Alamo City. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a gorgeous, iconic shot. Beautiful, beautiful outside. A little cold, though. 39 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, December 20th. If you haven't joined us yet this morning, Sarah Costa in Studio B just down the hall. We are trying something new this morning. Good morning, Sarah. How is it over there? Good morning. It's quiet in here, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. In the last half hour, Sarah Spivey turned to me. She's like, it's so quiet in here. And I was like, I wonder why. Wonder why. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the Sarahs. When we combine our forces, it's, we it's end a up lot. <laughs> Laughing, singing, <laughs> various things to make the noise level go up. But uh, yeah, we are trying something new this morning. Uh, outside right now, it's cold. It's 39 degrees at the airport, as Max just mentioned. But up in the hill country, look toward Bernie Stage Airfield right on the Kendall and Bear County line there. It's 32 degrees, touching freezing in Bernie, Kerrville, and Bandera this morning. So there could be a couple of areas outside of downtown San Antonio that are briefly freezing this morning, uh, but we're quickly going to warm up. We've got nothing but sunshine in the forecast for the day today. Look how these temperatures rebound. We'll already be in the 50s at 10, 66 at noon, 72 for the high, and then temperatures are going to take a plummet tonight. Speaking of tonight, tonight is going to be the best night to view the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, which uh, will appear very close to each other. The first time they've appeared this close to each other since 1623. Great conjunction happens about every 20 years, but again, this is going to be pretty close. The best time to view 45 minutes after sunset that figures to around 625 PM. Look southwest. This year's getting a little extra hype because it happens to happen right around Christmas, the week of Christmas. So people are calling it the Christmas star, the Bethlehem star. Again, tonight's going to be the best night to view because tomorrow when it peaks, we're actually going to have a few clouds in the area. I'll be back with a look at your forecast for this Christmas week coming up soon. Thank you, Sarah. And your top stories this morning. One man is dead after he was struck by a car on the northwest side. Police were called out to Northwest Loop 410 in Evers around 5 a.m. A witness on the scene told police that the man was running across the road when he was hit. The woman driving at the time says she did not see the man and police say she will not be facing any charges. The victim's identity remains unknown. We ask that you stay with us on KSAT 12 on air and, on, and online for the latest updates. Firefighters had a busy morning battling intense flames on the east side of town. Investigators believe it all started after a group of homeless people were trying to stay warm. Take a look. This was the situation. Crews on the scene telling us it was a storage facility behind a home in the 100 block of Shelburne, and it caught fire around 1:45 this morning. The owner told firefighters that a group of homeless people had his permission to stay there. They were just trying to keep warm. Unfortunately, the building caught fire, sustained heavy damage, declared a complete loss. Luckily, though, no injuries reported. An Army veteran shot and killed here in Military City, USA. The family of 27-year-old Bernard Terry says he moved to San Antonio for a new beginning with his wife and daughter, and they tell us he dedicated his life to helping others. He had ambitions of joining the San Antonio Police Department, but according to police, Terry was shot and killed while driving on Judson Road near George Cooper last week. His wife says he was, the only, he was only a minute away from their home. Now that he's gone, you know, you have to now you know, prepare life without him. He took a good person who wanted to be a father, no who reason. wanted to be around, you know, wanted to be around his family. Police are still searching for the person responsible for Terry's death. Meanwhile, a local thief targeted the city's housing authority just a week before Christmas. Someone broke into their property, stole half of the collected presents that were meant for families in need this holiday season. However, despite being burglarized and despite the obstacles of this pandemic, Saha, the San Antonio Housing Authority, was able to host their annual toy drive curbside. They were able to serve at least 100 families. Those of the organization say they are disappointed that someone would go out of the way and steal presents intended to bring joy to families in need. 
the need is so great for some that they resort to acts like this, uh, you know, in order to get to the head of the line. We're doing it as best we can as an agency to provide assistance and support to everybody we can in the community. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we just hope that people do the things that they need to do uh, in order to get the assistance they need and not try to cut in front of others and take from other people's uh, um, uh, from under their tree. The organization has launched a way to make up half of their toys that were stolen. If you'd like to donate anything for the families in need, you can visit their website, www.saha, that is S-A-H-A.org forward slash support. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Metro Health is reporting 744 new cases and no new deaths this morning. However, a backlog of 51 cases has been added to the all-time total, bringing that number to 100,822 for our county. In addition, hospitalizations are not looking good. 824 people remain in local hospitals this morning with 268 in the ICU and 133 on ventilators. Now, when it comes to the newly approved Moderna vaccine, FDA commissioner says any leftover doses from a vial can and should be used. Dr. Hahn says it is safe to use those leftover doses to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. It's estimated there would be as many as 10 doses of the vaccine in each vial manufactured by Moderna. And when it comes to the vaccine and the pandemic, there are still a lot of questions out there. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Robert Leverance with UT Health San Antonio. Good morning, Dr. Leverance. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us this morning. Now, we have the Pfizer vaccine here in San Antonio right now. So how has the distribution gone and what is the plan going forward? Well, this has been a very exciting time, Max. As you just described, the pandemic is really at its most grim moment. So to actually have some positive or uplifting information is just incredibly great. Uh, this has been a landmark moment for many of our healthcare providers, uh, a moment filled with emotion and tears of joy by many. We vaccinated, even at our own institution, thousands of healthcare providers uh, just over the past four days. So it's going very well. We're making a lot of progress and we're very excited. Now, Dr. Leverance, Moderna was approved for the U.S. on Friday. What do you guys expect in coming weeks, and could this be a game changer? I think it can be a real game changer. Uh, with all of the excitement of the Pfizer vaccine, one of the logistical problems is being able to move the vaccine from one center to another center uh, because of the ultra-cold storage, storage that's required. Well, Moderna doesn't require that, so our hope is that Moderna vaccines will be populating the freezers of small pharmacies and small provider offices this week. And so we can get these vaccines out to uh, assisted living homes, nursing homes, home health care, uh, individual provider offices and get their staff vaccinated and the providers themselves vaccinated. So really extending what we started this past week. Talking about the extension of the vaccinations, what does the timeline for vaccine distribution look like here in San Antonio? Now, we get a lot of questions from the general public. So when do you think you know, lower risk individuals could see that vaccine? Boy, Max, uh, as, as we've spoken about before, there's so many factors involved here with uh, the new vaccines that are coming down the pike and uh, the, uh, the, the, the amount of the supply and the timing of the supply for the current vaccines. Uh, still a lot of um, uh, moving parts to this. So we're still holding to early spring as uh, when we think it'll be available to the general public. Hey, if we can pull it off before then and that's possible, well, great. But we, we don't want to overpromise. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Leverance, and he'll be back joining us again in our 8.30 half hour. Great, thank you. Thank you. Time now, 8.08, 39 degrees out. Go ahead, Max. All right, still ahead on GMSA. The Spurs, not a great shot at the preseason. We did see some rookies, and we saw a new look with Marcus Aldridge. We're going to have all the details next in sports. Sandwiches, burgers, salads, and letters to Santa. A local restaurant in North San Antonio has become a very popular destination to drop off letters to the North Pole. Just ahead here on GMSA, how the owner is working with Santa. 39 degrees outside. Beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio. They are not exactly North Pole weather at 39. <laughs> it is cold for us here in San Antonio, but Sarah Spivey says things will be warming up. She'll let us know when we come back. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Ansira Nissan. Hi, this is Anthony Corey with Ansira Nissan. My wife and I would like to thank our son for his service and wish him a happy holidays. 
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. A San Antonio small business owner putting in extra hours, spreading a little extra holiday cheer. Along with delicious food, customers will also find a drop-off mailbox to the North Pole at the Northside restaurant Gino, Gino's Deli. That is awesome. Elisa Rivera, join us live from home with more on how the letters to Santa at that business got started. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. So it actually kind of got started by accident. These this uh, mail mail drop off Santa's mailbox um, has turned into thousands of letters and again a lot of extra work for the owner. But he's wanting to respond to them each um, one by one to spread some Christmas cheer. The owner Aleem Chaudhry says his wife purchased the Santa mailbox at a Sam's Club and put it in their shop. And before they knew it, they had stacks of letters filled with wishes, curiosity, innocence. Of course, some heartbreak, but more than anything, lots of hope. But here's the thing. Chaudhry, his wife, and volunteers are Santa's helpers and therefore have been granted the task to reply to each of these letters very quickly. The most memorable one this year was... Um this kid who is asking if Santa Claus, if you like hot sauce better than chocolate, <laughs> or this little kid wants a baby brother, and well, Santa only do toys, you know? <laughs> that was a cute letter. Like, this little guy, he's saying, I wonder if you are in North Pole with Mrs. Claus, do you have sp special superpowers? <laughs> I don't know. I think here in, in San Antonio, when Santa visits San Antonio, he'll like hot sauce more than chocolate. But we know he definitely has some special powers. And so do Chaudhry and his staff. The owner says it can obviously get a little overwhelming at times and relies on volunteers to get this task done. But how far will his team go to make sure that they reply to these letters and keep the spirit of Christmas alive? His inspiring answer in the next half hour here on GMSA. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Alicia. Well, first responders who have been fighting on the front lines of this pandemic this year will have one less thing to worry about for the rest of the year. A dirty car. The wash tub here in San Antonio is offering free full service car washes to all health care professionals, nurses, doctors, firefighters, EMS and police through December 31st. A valid employee ID is needed to redeem the free car wash offer. For details on what the wash includes and a list of locations, just head to ksat.com. All right, 39 degrees out there right now, Sarah. It's cold. Yep. Is it a good car wash day, though? I know yesterday I got just a little bit of rain at my house. Yeah, I would say today's a good car wash day. The uh, only thing to keep in mind is that we could have a little bit of drizzle in the morning later on this week, but today it's going to be beautiful. And in fact, it won't be cold for long. It's cold out there right now, but with the sun rising here, we are going to be seeing temperatures climb. It's 39, but like I said, there is a wind chill, and so it feels like it's 34 degrees outside. Uh, freezing up at Bernie State Airfield, right on the Kendall and Bear County line there. It's 31 in Bandera, 31 in Kerrville as well. But around San Antonio, we're above freezing, but still cold. 39 at JBSA Randolph and at Port SA, 41 in New Braunfels, and 40 down in Pleasanton. Look at the future cast today. There's nothing. It's just going to be sun uh, all day long, and uh, as a result, with the dry air, we're going to warm up. 68 for the high in Kerrville. 73 in Del Rio, 73 in Eagle Pass, 73 in Creaso Springs, 71 in New Braunfels, and it'll probably stay in the upper 60s for our friends in Austin. But here in San Antonio, we'll already be in the 50s at 10, 66 around lunch, 72 for the high. Uh, west northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then it'll get chilly tonight. Uh, temperatures will fall into the 40s by midnight, and we'll be in the upper 30s overnight. So again, chapstick weather out there with this dry air in place. Dew points are in the 20s and 30s behind yesterday's cold front. Yesterday's cold front gave some of us a little bit of rain. In fact, it was a good amount of rain uh, for areas generally north of San Antonio. But behind that front, it's nice and dry. And it's going to stay dry through the next couple of days. Tomorrow, we are going to have a few more clouds work their way in in the evening. Uh, but notice how humidity starts to go back up again. By Wednesday, that's when we'll have uh, that morning drizzle. We'll have muggy conditions, too. But notice the big roller coaster drop in dew points. Dew points could be in the single digits on Thursday, Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Day as well. That's going to have an impact to our temperatures, too. Here's a Christmas sneak peek for you. Again, that front will arrive on Wednesday. 
Thursday, Christmas Eve, it's going to be cool and sunny, a high temperature only in the upper 50s. Starting off Christmas Day, right at freezing. So it's going to get cold. It's going to feel like Christmas outside. I know there's been years past here in San Antonio where we've been nearly at 80 degrees on Christmas Day. But on Christmas Day this year, we'll just be topping off right near 60 degrees. So it's going to be a nice, cool day uh, on Christmas Day. Not only for us in San Antonio, but across the state of Texas. If you have plans to travel across the state of Texas for Christmas, just know that it's going to be chilly everywhere you go. Uh, chilly across the central plains as well. There could be some snow. There will be some snow rather across parts of New England and some heavy rain across the Pacific Northwest. But here in Texas, it's going to be dry. It's going to be sunny and it's going to be a little bit on the cool side. So again, that's just a reminder for your forecast tomorrow, starting off at 38, comfortable in the afternoon at 71. Winter solstice, so winter officially starts tomorrow. Uh, and again, in the evening, we'll likely have some clouds in play, mostly cloudy on Tuesday and Wednesday. Reminder that there is some drizzle on Wednesday morning in the forecast, and then that front makes it feel a lot like Christmas. Something I'm doing this year, which I'm excited about. I'll be working Christmas Eve and Christmas Ooh. Day. I'll be tracking Santa Claus. There we go. And just like Santa, just waving. <laughs> there you go. See, you got the Miss America thing. I'm, I'm throwing the wave out there. But Santa. tomorrow, officially winter. <laughs> Gotta love it, though. 70 and sunny right here in Texas. Very nice weather. All right, 819, 39 degrees out. And it is Sunday. That means it is time to talk football. Texans and Cowboys gearing up for big games today. After the break, details on who they're playing, when, implications, and we might even talk some A&M. Who knows? Plus, the silver and black are back. Details on the first three preseason games and who they face next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Yes, we're going to talk about football in just a few moments, but right now it is the race for SAIS. Possibly. We'll see. Anyway, three-point shooting, big emphasis for the Spurs this season. They've kind of been on the lower end of the NBA this past couple years, and that means a bigger role for LaMarcus Aldridge. He actually struggled from threes in the three preseason games, made four of 19. Not great numbers if you're a stats guy. So, I mean, just in case you aren't, 21%, not, up, not great. Went three for 10 against the Thunder, one for four in their first game with the Rockets, and then 0 for five at Houston Thursday night. But LaMarcus says he's not worried, and he knows that his outside shot will only get better. And speaking of the Spurs, they are going to be opening up their regular season Wednesday. I know, such a short break from the bubble. Wednesday, 7 o'clock, taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. So only time will tell. I think they're making the playoffs. We'll see. Pro football coverage. And here we go. It is Sunday. That means it is time to talk football. Dallas Cowboys going head-to-head -head with the San Francisco 49ers. We'll see what will happen. We got Andy Dalton, Amari Cooper. We'll see. Game's taking place at AT&T Center starting at noon. They are still in the playoff hunt, people. And at the same time, the Houston Texans. They actually got eliminated from playoff contention, but still a big game considering, you know, they don't have their first round pick this year. So they're going to be taking on the Indianapolis Colts. And of course, let's see, can we come back to me for a second? Here we go. All right. We're not done yet, Sarah Costa. Don't you worry. Yesterday, a huge slate of college football games. Huge implications for the college football playoffs. Texas A&M won huge, scoring 34 points, crushing Tennessee. They are right now at number five in the seeding. Here's the thing. Notre Dame got obliterated, to say it lightly, by Clemson. They were towards the end. So, in theory, Notre Dame could get knocked out and Texas A&M could get put into the college football playoff. That will be told later today because the college football playoff committee will meet and they'll make their final determination. I can hear Spivey whooping from here. A lot of whoop, whoop. Can we get a gig'em? Hey, gig'em, Aggies, farmers hey. fight, farmers fight, 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 farmers, farmers fight, hey, whoop. <laughs> we you have our own cheerleader. There we Love go. It. All right, 825, 39 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, the latest when it comes to the COVID-19 relief bill details on when a decision could be made. Plus, a police officer jumps over a highway guardrail to avoid being hit by a vehicle. We're going to explain the latest. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Just about 830 this morning, December 20th. If you haven't been joining us this morning, Sarah Costa is in the room just down the hall. We are trying something new. You are in Studio B. So how is it over there? Are you lonely yet? I, you know, I'm not lonely because I can still talk to you guys. Aww. I still hear and talk to you. So I'm not lonely at all. But 
What I do love mm -hmm. is this weather. Yesterday it got up to the 70s. It was sunny and beautiful. And Sarah, today, same thing? Same thing. It's going to get sunny. It is sunny. It's going to get warmer, rather, uh, and we'll be able to warm up nicely into the 70s. But right now outside, it is cold. Okay, We've got temperatures generally in the 30s. It's 39 at the airport, 39 at JBSA Randolph. Up in Kerrville, it is uh, freezing, 32 degrees, 31 in Bandera as well. That's very normal. Hill Country experiencing light freezes this time of year. 44, though, in Pleasanton, so a little bit of the warm spot on the map. Now, coming up in the forecast, We've got a few things that I want to talk about. Today's beautiful weather, of course, but tonight is actually going to be the best night to view the Great Conjunction, which is Saturn and Jupiter uh, forming uh, what looks to be in the sky appear as one star. And it's really going to be a beautiful sight to see. It peaks tomorrow, but tonight is the best time for viewing, and I'll tell you why coming up in a bit. And then, of course, it is Christmas this week. We've got a strong cold front on the way that's going to make it feel a lot like Christmas outside. So I've got to look ahead at all these headlines and, of course, your forecast coming up soon. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, a San Antonio police officer was moments away from being struck by a vehicle overnight. Backup was called to the scene of the crash around 1230 this morning at I-35 and the Highway 90 interchange. Officers say two vehicles were headed southbound on I-35 and drove to the Highway 90 interchange, one behind the other. Just ahead was a police officer helping another stalled vehicle on the side of the highway. One of the vehicles, a truck, did the right thing and moved over. But the other vehicle stayed on the right lane and slammed into the police unit and was sideswiped by the truck. The officer was not in the unit at the time and acted quickly, jumping over the guardrail to avoid being hit. The driver of the sedan will be evaluated for at the hospital for DWI. Charges are pending. Now to the bill that could help millions of Americans today. Lawmakers are appearing to reach a compromise on one of the final hurdles that could end in finally another stimulus deal. That nearly $1 trillion package for pandemic relief up against a deadline tonight. ABC's Rachel Scott is in Washington with the latest. With just hours to spare until a government shutdown, Congress finally reaching a compromise on a stimulus package, clearing the way for a vote in the House and Senate as early as today. If things continue on this path and nothing gets in the way, we'll be able to vote tomorrow. At stake, relief for millions of Americans out of work and fearing eviction. The American people cannot feed their families or pay their bills with Congress good faith discussions. They need us to act. Ricardo Ramirez says he's barely getting by, now at risk of possibly losing everything if those unemployment benefits expire in less than two weeks. It's about time for them to do something for the community. Lawmakers working through the weekend were at odds over the role of the Federal Reserve. Both sides warning they were running out of time. We're quickly approaching an all or nothing situation. But just before midnight, Democratic leader Chuck Schumer signaled significant progress. Aid saying lawmakers pushed past that major hurdle, agreeing to a roughly $900 billion relief package that would include $300 in weekly federal unemployment benefits and $600 in direct payments for millions of Americans. President Trump, who has been silent on the rise in coronavirus cases, calling on Congress to increase the amount of those stimulus checks, tweeting in all caps, get it done, and give them more money in direct payments. That was ABC's Rachel Scott reporting. And when it comes to the vaccinations, over 270,000 people have gotten their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. As of yesterday, the FDA reported just six serious aller allergic reactions to the vaccine. There were some additional reports of allergic reactions, but those cases were not considered serious. And one of the severe cases, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said the person may have had a history of severe allergic reactions to vaccines. None of the other cases had any known allergic reaction to the vaccines or medications or food of the six people most were treated at the hospital all the patients are under the age of 65. 
And as Sarah was saying just throughout the morning, we've been talking about the latest news on the vaccines and the uptick in cases of the coronavirus in and around Texas and around the country. And there are still so many questions. That is why we are joined live with Dr. Robert Leverance from the UT Health San Antonio once again. Good morning, doctor. And we talked hey, about thanks again for having me. Not a problem. We talked about the new vaccine approval, and there's a big difference between these vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Well, the main difference is really logistical, and that's more for uh, us to deal with in administration, and that is the Moderna vaccine doesn't require the ultra-cold storage, and that's a big advantage because you can get the vaccine out to smaller pharmacies and practices Whereas right now, that's really hard to do with the Pfizer vaccine. Otherwise, though, uh, the uh, Moderna vaccine is an mRNA vaccine, as we say. So it's very similar in technology to the Pfizer vaccine. And so uh, its effects and properties uh, should be very similar as well, meaning that it's highly effective. It requires a second dose. Uh, the safety profile appears to be very good, like the Pfizer vaccine. So to the general public, it should look uh, very similar, but more available once it's available. <laughs> Now, Dr. Leverance, we're at this unique point where, yes, two vaccines have been approved, but we're still in the midst of this pandemic. We've seen an uptick. We've seen a surge. So from your perspective, from a medical perspective, what have our hospitals looked like? Give our viewers kind of an inside look at what you guys are seeing. Boy, Max, I'm sure glad that we have this vaccine to talk about because otherwise uh, the story of this pandemic continues to be very grim. We're clearly at the worst point in this pandemic with the highest number of hospitalizations across the state and across the, the country. Here in San Antonio, uh, this surge has not yet approached the level that the summer surge approached, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if by uh, Christmas and New Year's we were at a similar level in contemplating reopening um, a, field, a field hospital. So this is still very concerning. Uh, the only good news is that, hey, we know that uh, public health mitigations work. What I mean is, hey, we know the drill. You know, wear your mask, uh, wash your hands, uh, distance from other people, uh, stay home if you don't need to go out. Those things work. So this vaccine isn't going to have a huge impact, probably very minimal impact on this current surge. And so, boy, oh, boy, uh, we need to be mindful uh, throughout these holidays and continue to do the good things that have kept many people safe uh, here thus far. And Dr. Leverens, you're just talking about that surge from Thanksgiving. Now Christmas is approaching this week. Is it safe to gather with family members outside of your household, especially not wearing masks? Well, uh, the, I, ideally, it would be best not to gather with those um, folks outside your household. On the other hand, though, if you so choose to gather with folks, and we understand that some folks will. And so if that's the case, though, please practice safely. Uh, uh, avoid buffet style meals so that not everyone is touching uh, the, the same spoon. Uh, wear a mask if you're in the house. If it's a nice day, have the, have the meal outside. And of course, wash your hands. And, and folks from similar households should be sitting nestled together rather than mixing people up. So sure, if folks do choose to gather, boy, do it safely. There's still ways to uh, stay protected and keep your family members safe. Dr. Leverens, thank you so much for your time again this morning. You can see his full interview, especially from the 8 o'clock hour as well, at, on KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Dr. Leverens. All right, thanks for having me. Well, in your morning headlines, President Donald Trump downplaying a massive cyber attack in the United States government after Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has linked the attack to Russia. Now, the president suggesting in a tweet without any evidence that China could be involved. President Trump did not condemn the attack, instead claiming that it actually could have impacted voting machines. Now, officials inside the Trump administration have said that the attack poses a grave risk to networks across public and private sectors and those familiar with the matter say that the president's remarks contradicting Pompeo have left officials scrambling to reconcile these competing statements. President Trump is also making plans to hit the campaign trail once again. The president tweeted last night that he plans to hold a rally in Georgia in support of Republican Senators Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue. The rally will be held on January 4th, the night before runoff elections are held in the state. And what could be a pivotal move moment for the balance of power in the U.S. Senate? And time now is just about 8.39, 39 degrees out. Over a thousand letters to Santa, thanks to one local <laughs> deli. After the break, our Alicia Barretta tells us how you can help spread some of that Christmas cheer. And speaking of Christmas cheer, Christmas looks like it's just around the corner, 39 degrees today. Could it get warmer? The sun is out. It looks beautiful out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey right after the break.
have we got deals for you. Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now, I can't wait to spotlight this next product. It's nostalgia in a box, and I'm seriously considering getting this for my little ones. Create some fun with this retro TV gaming console. Comes with 620 pre-installed games, and it comes with one TV video game console, two hardwired controllers, one audio video cable for TV, one power charger, and one user manual. Now, it's easy to link to your television. You can play games like you did when you were a little one like me. All of this for a crazy low price worth all the fun you'll have while spending more time at home as we all are these days. Now the retail price for this is $99, but the game console case at deals price is $39.99. That is a 60% discount. You can get this deal along with many others at caseatdeals.com. The COVID fight, more hope, another major breakthrough, a second vaccine within reach today. Admiral Brett Girard faces George, plus the cyber hack. Is America under attack? Our powerhouse guests and the round table break it all down on ABC's This Week. Good morning and welcome back in North San Antonio. Thousands have visited Gino's Deli for their food, but they have stayed to have a good word with Santa. Yeah, many are dropping off their letters to the North Pole at that restaurant and can expect to hear from Santa and his helpers. This is so awesome. Elisa Barrera joining us live from home with more on how the owner is spreading some holiday cheer. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, a big task ahead of him for that owner. And you can, of course, order your food, but you can also drop off your letter to Santa. And Gino's Deli, let me start off with telling you where they're located. They're located off of Hubner and Lock Hill Selma Road. And again, there is the, where, that ha where they have that mailbox to the North Pole, and they have hundreds, if not thousands of letters to reply to. Owner Alim Chaudhry says his wife purchased the Santa mailbox at a Sam's Club three years ago and put it in their shop, but little did they know it would get this big. Now every holiday season, they have stacks of letters that include Christmas lists, live stories, question like, does Santa have superpowers or does he like hot sauce? Chaudhry says the amount of letters is more than he ever expected, but it keeps him humble. Then there's a lot of letters with good hope, kids being uh, hopeful. Kids are very resilient, they're strong. I thought I was gonna get a lot more negative letters this year, but I did not. Usually we get, keep getting letters till Christmas Eve. And those, the last Christmas Eve letters, I end up uh, hand delivering myself because the kids won't get the letters in time. All letters are replied to, as you just heard, and Chaudhry says he could definitely use some help from volunteers with good penmanship. Gino's Deli is open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., and they're located at 13 to 10 Humor Road. Again, their address, 13 to 10 Humor Road, and that's right at the intersection with Lock Hill Selma Road. So a lot of letters to reply to, and it's just so amazing to, to know that he will hand deliver those to make sure the kids and even some adults get a letter from Santa. Max, Sarah, back to you. That is so That's fantastic. That's awesome. Gino's also great for um, Philly cheesesteaks. There you go. Right there on Hevener. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, also outside right now, the weather is great. We are starting to warm up already, but it is still in the 30s. It's 39 degrees at the airport. Winds are from the west, northwest at about 10 miles per hour, 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we do have a little bit of a wind chill. It feels closer to 34 degrees outside. Now, uh, out near Kerrville, just got above freezing. It's 35 degrees there, 40 in Del Rio, 39 in the Nevada. 43 in Carrizo Springs, 41 in New Braunfels, and 44 uh, in Gonzales. But this time yesterday, we were in the 60s, and then a cold front moved through, and so we're sitting about 25 degrees cooler than we were this time yesterday. A welcome change if you do like the colder air, uh, and I hope you got a little bit of rain from that front that moved through yesterday. Some of us did, especially north of San Antonio. Now on the satellite radar, it's quiet, not only here, but across the entire state of Texas. All of the rain is pushed on off to the east. The cold front is going to move through Florida today and out into the Atlantic. Some snowfall across New England, but like I said, it's dry here in San Antonio and it is going to stay dry today. Sunshine all day long for us, but tomorrow night, we're actually going to see some clouds move back in. There'll be those high thin wispy cirrus clouds, but uh, we'll see plenty of sunshine to start the day tomorrow. So for the day today, 
Uh, after this cold start, we'll already be in the 50s at 10, 66 at noon, 72 for the high temperature, and then temperatures will fall off pretty quickly this evening. Uh, we'll have west northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and it'll be chilly again in the evening hours. Now, I mentioned that the clouds are going to be back into the picture tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, where they get really close to each other, that's going to peak tomorrow night, but the viewing is going to be better today because, again, those clouds are going to move into place uh, tomorrow night. How could you view the great conjunction? Well, you can look to the southwest of the sky. About 45 minutes after sunset will do you good. Uh, that's about right around 625 tonight. Like I said, it does peak tomorrow. Uh, Saturn and Jupiter are only going to be a tenth of a degree uh, away from each other, at least appear that way. And that's the closest they've been since 1623. Great conjunctions happen about every 20 years, but this one in particular it has caught a lot of hype because again, it's going to be the closest since 1623 and it's happening Christmas week. So a lot of folks are calling this the Christmas star, the Bethlehem star. Again, the best viewing will actually be tonight because of our clear skies. You will be able to see that through Christmas. It's just going to happen closer to sunset and a little bit more difficult to see. Speaking of Christmas, a cold front is going to arrive on Wednesday and that's going to set up a pretty nice Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, making it feel nice and cool outside on Christmas Eve. Our high temperature will only be in the 50s. And then on Christmas Day itself, starting off near freezing, topping off only near 62 degrees. So it's going to be nice and cool uh, for Christmas. I, there have been Christmas pass where we've been up to 80 degrees, so it's nice that the weather is going to match the season at least uh, for us. Uh, another thing to note is Wednesday before that front arrives, we're probably going to have some morning drizzle and fog. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, our rain chances are really not that great uh, other than that drizzle possibility on Wednesday. Fantastic. So I, I got to be honest, I have family in the Northeast and the other day, my mom sent me pictures of my brother and my dad shoveling the driveway because it snowed so much. Yeah, they got over four feet of snow out there. And I just have nothing to say except for the fact that <laughs> gotta love San Antonio. I mean, 72 and sunny right in the middle of December. We have winter solstice tomorrow, 71 yeah. and sunny. It's pretty great. Max, I feel like you like the weather so much that you should you should do a forecast one day. Give me a day off. Oh, yes. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Anytime. Sarah Nicosa and I can do it. There you go. All right, time now is 8.50, 39 degrees out. Well, combine the pandemic, holidays, and a new baby, and it can push new moms over the edge just ahead. The entire spectrum of mood disorders that can impact women before and after giving birth. And let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, zero, eight, fireball, one, daily four, five, two, five, five, fireball, six. Hopefully you like the number five. Cash five, eight, 10, 19, 20, 24. Texas lotto, seven, 18, 28, 29, 30, 50. And powerball, 27, 32, 34, 43, 52, powerball 13, power play two. In the news you need to know before you go, one man dead after being hit by a vehicle on Northwest Loop 410 in Evers around 5 this morning. A witness on the scene telling police the man was running across the road. That's when he was hit by a woman driving at the time. She says she didn't see the man, and right now it doesn't look like she's going to be facing any charges. We are still waiting to learn that victim's identity. We're going to have a full update online and on air as that information becomes available. It's 47 degrees in San Antonio right now. Uh, we are going to be seeing temperatures continue to climb. That's impressive because we started off right at 38, so we're already warming up just from about an hour and a half of sunshine. Today, 72 for the high and pleasant. West Northwest winds at five to 10 miles per hour. And here's your seven day forecast, the week of Christmas. Tomorrow, winter officially starts with the winter solstice. A reminder that uh, the conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn, the best time to view it will be tonight because tomorrow when it peaks, we'll have some clouds. But looking ahead to Christmas, it's gonna be nice and cool. Cold front arrives on Wednesday. I'm excited for that conjunction, Sarah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, from just down the hall in Studio B. Thank you so much for watching us. Have a great rest of your Sunday.